This morning's awards are for the fourth uh, quarter in yearly awards to recognize the best of the best within the sheriff's office. And we're going to start off with the chaplain. Chap. Hey Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we do thank you for today. We thank you uh, that we've come from the north, south, east, and west to be here to recognize uh, men and women that have gone the extra mile and have that spirit of excellence in them. And we, we thank you for your hand of blessing that continues to rest upon not only our agency, our community. Lord, keep us safe and secure from the, uh, the darkness and evil that is always ever present out there. And we thank you for helping our agency to uh, to do its best uh, to keep us safe and secure. And we thank you for uh, being with us now and letting us just have a, a little time of, of joy as we recognize uh, uh, some of the St. Lucie County's finest. We pray this prayer in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, first, let me ask, is uh, John Stahlhut here? Did he make it? John? No, I don't think so. Okay. Chap, come on up. We're actually going to recognize you first off. You didn't know that, did you? Uh, each year, the National Sheriff's Association asks for nominees for certain categories, and this year, uh, Chaplain Dave Thompson was nominated for the National Sheriff's Association Chaplain of the Year Award. The committee appointed to judge the competition for this award uh, has completed its review of all the nominations and selected Chaplain Brian Booker of Berks County, Pennsylvania Sheriff's Office. We congratulate Chaplain Thompson on being nominated for this award even though he was not selected as the recipient. We feel that his valuable contributions to the field of criminal justice and law enforcement should be commended. We are therefore including a certificate of merit that you may present to Chaplain Thompson. Please extend to him our respect and admiration for all of his accomplishments. And we thank you, Dave, for everything you do, man. Thanks. Same thing, Sal uh, Anacita, Sal. Deputy Sal was nominated for the National Sheriff's Association Law Enforcement Explorer Post Advisor of the Year. Um, although he did not win, um, we feel that his valuable contributions to the youth of our community and the field of criminal justice and law enforcement should be commended. Accordingly, we have enclosed a certificate of merit for you to present to Deputy Anacita. Please extend to him our respect and admiration. And the winner was James Butterfield from Pinellas County. You know him? Mm -hmm. Yep. Sure All right. Congratulations. Thanks for everything you do with our youth. Next, we're going to have Major Ty uh, for the honorees from the Department of Detention. Good morning. Good morning. Let me start out with the Detention Civilian of the Year, Daytra Reagan Bryant. <laughs> Daytra has been working in the Department of Detention for 19 years. She has worn many different hats, working the front lobby, payroll, law library, and currently as the inmate welfare coordinator. She is well organized, dependable, systematic, and efficient. When Sergeant Wheeler was promoted, he immediately added more assignments to her workload. She embraced these changes enthusiastically. Daytra was instrumental in training Sergeant Wheeler in the details of his position and assisted Lieutenant O'Brien in administration. Daytra cross-trained other clerks about inmate welfare procedures and responsibilities. She was, has taken on these added responsibilities without complaint, instead showing increased drive to help her supervisors and the unit succeed. In addition, Daytra has attained her Bachelor of Arts degree, and she is a tremendous asset to her unit, the Department of Detention, and the Sheriff's Office. And congratulations, Daytra. <laughs> Detention Deputy of the Fourth Quarter and Detention Deputy of the Year, Deputy Jennifer Perkins.
Deputy Perkins was recently chosen as the accreditation deputy for the Department of Detention. Since assuming this post, she has eagerly taken on inspections of all areas, remaining firm but fair, documenting thoroughly through words and photos, allowing us to demonstrate both failures and victories to the staff and contractors in the facility. Deputy Perkins shined during her first accreditation assessment. Her training and dedication showed and proved her as an asset in helping us attain reaccreditation in both the Florida Model Jail Standards and the National Commission on Correctional Health Care. Outside of her accreditation, her job duties have her assigned to policy and procedure development, project management, and giving tours of the jail to the public. In addition, she has taken on the American Jail Association Certified Jail Officer course in order to better herself for her position with the agency. Thank you, Jennifer. Congratulations. <laughs> Detention Supervisor of the quarter or the fourth quarter, Sergeant Jeff Jackson. <clears throat> Sergeant Jackson has proven to be an effective communicator. His communication fosters a mutual respect between him and the staff he supervises. He projects a positive attitude to the staff and takes pride in his work. Other supervisors as well as acting supervisors lean on Sergeant Jackson for his job knowledge and experience. He maintains a high level of discipline among the inmate population and the results are discernible. Sergeant Jackson performs the role of acting lieutenant on many occasions with notable success. In addition to his role as an operational sergeant, Sergeant Jackson performs the role of the emergency response team commander. He and his team conducted three joint K-9 ERT shakedowns that reduced contraband and established control that has calmed the overall jail atmosphere. Sergeant Jackson has proven to be a positive role model and effective supervisor and leader in the Department of Detention. And congratulations, Jeff. Commendation, Deputy Kiera Bennett. Deputy Bennett here. Okay, that is it. Let me introduce Major Michael Graves. She's not here. No, it's not here. Good morning. Start off with the civilian of the fourth quarter, Russ Cullum. Russ came to the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office part-time in September of 2012 after serving with the Port St. Lucie Police Department. Russ, a crime prevention specialist, is a person who is, takes on the most difficult tasks and gets results. In the four fourth quarter, he attended 25 community meetings. At these meetings, he instructed citizens on prevention techniques and addressed what, they, uh, what several of them call quality of life and complaints. He is the person they turn to if they have a problem. One successful crime prevention program targets financial institutions, security, and training. Um, uh, Russ put on a realistic mock robbery during, for this training. Local banks have placed their trust in our agency because of Russ. Russ brings a new dimension to the crime prevention unit, and in St. Lucie County, he continues to strengthen the partnership between our agency and the community. Thank you, Russ. <laughs> Civilian of the Year, Kim Briglia. Super! <laughs> Kim Briglia uh, began her career in the records unit in 2010. <laughs> in August of 2012, she transferred to Human Resources. In March of this year, Kim was promoted from clerk to HR specialist. Along with this new role, she was responsible for training her replacement. Kim managed the roles of HR specialists while assisting uh, to train her replacement. And that took two months. The decision was made to restructure the roles in the unit in order to provide more efficient customer service to our employees. So the two positions of HR specialist and benefits specialist were combined into one functioning role. <coughs> Kim jumped in to learn the new role and all it entails. In addition, Kim oversees four volunteers who inv are involved in the scanning process. Last Friday, or last February, excuse me, she became certified as a Zumba instructor and teaches Zumba classes each week at the SO. Thank you, Kim, for all you do.
Civilian Supervisor of the Fourth Quarter and of the Year, Lori Pereira. Lori was hired in 2012 as the Human Resource Supervisor. She has made significant positive changes to the unit to update and streamline the HR office. She has researched, implemented, and trained HR staff on different websites and databases to help in day-to-day -day human resources management. Lori had a hand in updating and revamping general orders to bring them current and to make sure that we are in compliance with EEOC and accreditation standards as it pertains to HR. HR has undergone a complete staff change and Lori has accepted the challenge of training new employees. Lori envisions a full service professional HR unit. Re recently, she took on some of the risk management manager's responsibilities. Lori continuously expands her knowledge uh, to best deal with issues facing our employees. She encourages and motivates her staff to learn new things and become involved in various aspects of the agency. As a supervisor, Lori's performance has been exemplary. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> Patrol Support Deputy of the Year, Diedrich Hewick. Deputy Diedrich Hewick serves as a school resource deputy at Westwood High School. He is respected by the faculty, the staff, and the students. Deputy Hewick responds to the dean's office for Deputy Hewick responded to the dean's office for a disturbance. He attempted to quell disruption involving several students. Resultantly, he was forced to arrest one of the students involved in the situation. As Deputy Hewick was attempting to place the student into custody, the suspect began to violently resist. While trying to gain control, the suspect's brother arrived on the scene and attempted to intervene. Once the first suspect was under control, Deputy Hewick had to engage the suspect's brother. The brother struck Deputy Hewick several times. Deputy Hewick was able to gain control of the brother and place him under arrest. The suspects were unarmed and were taken to the Department of Juvenile Justice. This incident is just one example of the quality of performance done by Deputy Hewick throughout the year. Deputy Hewick is also a member of the agency SWAT team and he is a certified basic gang investigator and member of the gang intelligence team. Thank you, Diedrich. <laughs> Volunteer of the fourth quarter, Nick O'Halloran. Mr. Nick O'Halloran is a volunteer advisor for our Explorer Post number 400. During the fourth quarter, he assisted the explorers with every detail the kids worked. Mr. O'Halloran is willing to help the explorers with anything they need. Especially, he helps them get equipment to various details such as four-wheelers, golf carts, pull trailers, etc. In addition to working details, Mr. Halloran takes the lead with our junior cadet program and does an outstanding job. These are kids from 10 years old up to age 14. When they reach age 14, they can transfer into the Explorer program. Nick also helps once or twice a week with the training programs the kids are in. Nick is an asset to the kids and the Explorer post. We appreciate all that he does. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Life saving. Roxanne Bourbonier. Don't see her. Going once. Okay. Commendation. Lieutenant Bob Hassey and Ed Walco. There they are. Hey. Where's Hassey at? Hassey's not out there? We recognize Lieutenant Bob Hasse and Ed Walko for their assistance with renovations made to the 10-8 television show set. For two seasons, the television show consisted of an industrial style backdrop and two columns. Although the set was very professional looking, it was lacking something. A decision was made to incorporate a matching desk and round riser that the desk would sit upon. The desk would provide an area to rest papers and or display items brought by the guests. The table would allow for guests extra guests. Overall, the additions would give the show a more relaxed feel. Lieutenant Hassey worked with crime prevention designing the riser. Under Lieutenant Hassey's supervision, inmate labor was used to cut cost. Ed put his welding skills to work by creating table legs, which matched the existing columns. 
The final result is a very professional looking riser, trimmed with diamond plated vinyl and edging. Two shows have been taped since the additions. The television crew of St. Lucie County TV commented on how professional the set looked. Because of their efforts, the project was completed for a little over $1,000, saving the agency nearly $7,000. Wow. <laughs> unit Citation Training Unit. Brian Hester, Kevin Lindstadt, Tommy Johnson, Deb McKenna, and Tina Speaker and Gary Morales posthumously. <laughs> the Sheriff's Office Training Unit began formal agency-wide in-service training in 1995. In October 2012, the unit expanded to include full-time law enforcement trainers. At the beginning of 2013, the training staff hit the ground running. They provided updated and job relevant training to 300 law enforcement members through four separate blocks of instruction. Conducted rifle and specialty impact munitions training to 160 employees, 14 driver challenges, three rad women's self-defense classes, two 10-week citizens academies, and several two-week new hire academies for newly appointed law enforcement personnel. All these undertakings were conducted during a typical training week, which included a setup day, three days of training, and administrative day. Once a block of training was completed, a two-week turnaround was the only interval before another training cycle started. The staff members are hard-working and dedicated members of the agency whose primary goal is to enhance the capabilities of each individual. Their innovation and skill has served to improve safety and performance of the deputies and improve service to the community of St. Lucie County. Thank you, Brian, Kevin, Tommy, Deb, Tina, and Gary, who remains missed. Thank you. Chief Deputy. Good morning, everyone. Because most of the management of the Department of Law Enforcement is off today, I'm going to fill in for them. <laughs> it's just the way we roll here, right, Charlie? I will point out that uh, Captain Scavuzzo did show up today, which is a credit to the Department of Law Enforcement. Um, we are here today to recognize the detective of the fourth quarter, Dave Blatchford. Dave? <laughs> Detective Blatchford has been with the office since 2006. Aside from his duties in CID, he is also a member of the SWAT team. During this quarter, Detective Blatchford investigated 59 case, ca cases. A highlight from this quarter was a burglary and theft reports from local fitness centers. The suspect was purchasing gift cards with stolen credit cards from the burglaries. Detective Blatchford obtained a video from the locations then contacted the intelligence-led policing unit and he determined these suspects were committing burglaries in Palm Beach, Martin, Indian River counties. Detective Blatchford met with the personnel from these agencies and developed a network of sharing intelligence. On December 2nd, patrol deputies caught suspects in the Planet Fitness parking lot that looked like the suspects from, the detec from Detective Blatchford's uh, bolo. Through follow-up investigation, Detective Blatchford was able to charge these suspects with 26 felonies, seven misdemeanors, because of this information sharing, the suspects have holds in Lee, Brevard, and Martin counties, and charges are expected from Indian River and Palm Beach counties. Also, FDLE con was contacted and has started an investigation in the Miami-Dade area uh, with regards to the redemption of the gift cards that were purchased with the stolen credit cards. Dave also worked 357 hours at the fair this year, and we're very proud of the work that he did out there at the fair. Dave, it's the little things, you know. The, how many stuffed animals did you win while you were out there? Because the one day I saw you all lugging them out, your arms were full. Next up, Detective of the Year, Rob Valentine. Rob? Go on the record, these detectives look like a million dollars. Well, they do. They do. Look at these outfits, man. Look, clothing allowance is paying off. Did, Detective Rob Valentine has had a very busy year. He has maintained a caseload, covered his on-call weeks, and continued to investigate crimes against children. 
In addition, he worked at keeping up with the pawn shops, secondhand dealers, and the scrap metal industry. That in and of itself is a full-time commitment. Deputy Valentine has investigated numerous crimes against children complaints. These investigations are extremely tedious and time consuming. They often require the issuance of multiple subpoenas and countless hours of re reviewing data and images from the internet. In the first three months of 2013, Detective Valentine wrote about two dozen search warrants resulting in the arrest of 10 individuals. Collectively, they are charged with over 200 felonies in reference to the possession and dissemination of child pornographic material. These defendants are currently being prosecuted in the state and federal court system and have the potential to be sentenced to several hundred years of incarcer incarceration. Rob, thank you for a job well done. Patrol Operations Deputy of the Year, Paul Pearson. <laughs> Deputy, Deputy Pearson has been a member of the office since August of 2002. He was assigned to Patrol Operations Squad A as a float deputy until October 2013 when he was transferred to criminal investigations. In early June, there had been a crime spree of multiple stolen cars out of Savannah Club community. Within this crime spree, Deputy Pearson located three of the approximately five stolen vehicles. Two were occupied at the time he located them. One of the suspects helped identify the main suspect from these thefts. The, others, the other occupied stolen auto was occupied by the primary offender. This sequence of events also provided CID with information regarding multiple residential burglaries. Deputy Pearson is an active member of the SWAT team where he serves as the entry team leader. He is also being awarded a combat injury award later in this ceremony for an incident that occurred in November in Highlands County where Deputy Pearson was wounded uh, by an assailant at that location. Deputy Pearson is a model employee and an asset to our agency. Paul, thank you very much. <laughs> Administrative Law Enforcement Supervisor of the Quarter, Chris Sissio. Chris? During this past quarter, Sergeant Chris Sissio was extremely active in patrol operations, training, and bomb disposal. He was tasked to set up a, and teach an incident command class to review procedures with all supervisors for mass casualty preparedness drill. This class allowed our supervisors to drill and to excel in the performance of this high standard. Also, during this quarter, Sergeant Sissio was asked to supervise a temporary team of law enforcement professionals focusing on identifying and addressing violence in our community. This unit was called the Crime Suppression Team. With a strategy in place and hand-chosen members of the team, Sergeant Sissio took reins and began the operation. The operation was slated for four weeks but later extended to ten weeks based on the performance and the results that the team was uh, getting for their work. Uh, during the period, we had two shooting incidents while the Crime Suppression Team was de de deployed. The success of the operation was due to Sar Sergeant Sissio's hard work and his ability to motivate the members assigned to this endeavor. Thank you for uh, all the work that you did on this. I'd also like to mention uh, Steve Sessions, Sergeant Steve Sessions, who filled in for Chris on several occasions when Chris was either on vacation or on his days off. So it was a great team effort. Thank you. Administrative Law Enforcement Supervisor of the Year, Kevin Dietrich and Kurt Mitweed. We have dual recipients here. Kurt? Do you see Kevin? I do not see Kevin. This past year has been a difficult one for the people of St. Lucie County who have been faced with violence in the streets, flooding caused by Tropical Storm Isaac at the end of 2012, to the large wildfires, Lakewood Park, and the tragic loss of Sergeant Gary Morales. Shift C Supervisors Lieutenant Kevin Dietrich and Sergeant Kurt Mitweed led their squad with distinction through all of these events with characteristic decisiveness and modesty. When asked about the squad's exemplary accomplishments and professionalism, Lieutenant Dietrich and Sergeant Mitweed characteristically reply that they are just doing their jobs and the real credit goes to the deputies under their command. They often point out many of the squad's members 
have moved to specialized units including criminal investigations, special investigations, school resource, and the Marine Patrol. I hope we will never see another year like 2013, but if we do, I couldn't ask for a more dedicated pair of squad leaders than Sergeant Mitweedy and Lieutenant Dietrich. According to Sergeant Mitweedy, this time that I have been working with Lieutenant Dietrich was one of the most gratifying assignments in my 25 years of service. It is all about making oneself better and more complete through lessons, examples, and experience. He has the rare fundamental quality in his leadership and he cares deeply about the members of his squad and the Sheriff's Office. Lieutenant Dietrich explains in his own words, supervisors are only as good as their troops. As we have shared in many successful outcomes this past year and the painful moments with our troops, we would also like to share the award with them. So for Kurt and Lieutenant uh, Dietrich, thank you very much. Next up, Volunteer of the Year, Chief Deputy Warren Alford. Chief Alford had a very successful year, uh, except, yeah, let me start over. <laughs> Chief Alford had a very successful career with the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office years back, but he continues to volunteer with the agency uh, and he's been doing so for many years. He slips into the un unit quietly on his scheduled days and begins to go to work. His job assignment involves verifying the correct court case number on every arrest affidavit generated in this county. Once he confirms the, the correct clerk numbers, he then enters it into the jail management system for future reference. This data is critical to accurately calculating how much time an inmate must serve after being sentenced. Many of you may not know, but Chief Alford retired from the Sheriff's Office in 1985 as the Chief Deputy. When it comes to older cases from years past, his prior experience here at the Sheriff's Office is, in, is an invaluable source of information. Chief Alford is definitely an asset to the Sheriff's Office. His work ethic demonstrates the confidence and efficiency beyond that is reasonably accessible. Chief, thank you very much for your years of service. <laughs> Next up, Paul Pearson for his combat uh, injury and John Brady, Ephraim Neal, Chris Jaden for combat crosses. In November of this year, the DEA and the Highlands County Sheriff's Office requested the assistance of the U.S. Marshals Regional Fugitive Task Force to serve multiple narcotics-related arrest warrants simultaneously at three homes in Sebring and Highlands County. Two of, the, two of the suspects were confirmed to be inside a residence. A surveillance team watched the residence before task force members approached the house on foot, established a perimeter, and then knocked on the front door and announced, police with a warrant. After a reasonable amount of time, the team began to force entry into the front door of the residence. Hold on one minute. Who do we take the directions from, Mark or her? Her? Okay. There we go. Detective Paul Pearson was assigned to the entry team and to be the one to make entry with the entry tool. He began to force open the front door after multiple strikes to the door the team could see into the residence. As Detective Pearson continued his entry, an unknown number of people inside began shooting through the front door. Detective Pearson was shot and immediately moved to cover. Team members returned fire and the shooting inside the residence stopped. The team pulled back from the residence and called for SWAT team assistance. While the team was pulling back, Detective John Brady saw the suspect through the door. He engaged the suspect and ordered him with loud verbal, verbal commands to give himself up to the officers. Uh, Detective Chris Jaden maintained his position to the right of the door to cover Bra uh, Detective Brady, and uh, Detective Neal also maintained a position to cover Brady. Brady ordered the suspect to crawl to the door while removing the first suspect. The second suspect was observed and given the same commands. He also crawled to the front door and was taken into custody. The two apprehended males were taken into custody were the warrant suspects that they were looking for. No other persons were located in the resident residence when it was cleared by the SWAT team. Congratulations on a job well done. <laughs> we're 
Life-Saving Award, Joseph Brennan and Andrew Stewart. Are they here? Frank, are you coming to collect this for him? I saw you moving to the front. I thought you might want in on this. Commendation, Frank Burns, Donna Carmichael, Tad Leroy, Santiago Martinez, Michelle Siders, Brooke Southerd, Ron Wentz, and Richard Snoopy Young. <laughs> On October 3rd, several home burglaries were reported in the Spanish Lakes original development. Detective Santiago Martinez was assigned these cases and within a few weeks had over 60 residential burglaries <clears throat> inside the development. Detective Youngs, Burns, and Donna Carmichael processed the stolen property for any evidence to li link the suspects to the crimes. In all of the cases, forced entry was made to different types of property and different types of property was stolen. As a result of the investigation, several search warrants were executed and over 600 pieces of stolen property were recovered. Detective Wentz and Young and photographed all the properties so we had something to show victims. Most of the victims lived out of state and were our winter residents, so that was the only way we could communicate with them as far as the uh, description of the uh, property that was recovered. Once all of the photos were taken, Donna, Donna Carmichael and Michelle Siders and Brooke Southerd how to print these photographs into different sizes. They printed the photos, created books with the photos so that victims could look through the books and identify their stolen property. Deputy Tad Leroy, who was on light duty to CID, typed all of the reports on the burglaries where, not <clears throat> where no property was stolen. The team effort resulted in 13 cases cleared by arrest uh, with approximately 30 felony charges. Information was developed that the suspects were traveling to Palm Beach County pawning stolen property. Detective Martinez contacted the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office and was able to obtain an additional 20 felony warrants for dealing in stolen property in Palm Beach County. Because of this team effort, these suspects are currently in jail and are no longer victimizing our community. <laughs> Commendation for Chris Sissio, Joe Bell, Matt Brewster, Matt Dietrich, Charles Singletary, Guy Montgomery from the Fort Pierce Police Department, Martin Ortiz, Fort Pierce Police Department, Demetrius Owens, Fort Pierce Police Department, and David Petrie, Fort Pierce Police Department. This award was mentioned earlier in the presentation. A multi-agency crime suppression team was formed to improve the safety and quality of life to St. Lucie County residents and its guests. It was compromised of a sergeant and four deputies from our office and four deputies from the Fort Pierce Police Department. Each deputy was paired with a police officer and this was the first of its kind initiative for both agencies. No. <laughs> Units Units were deployed to areas where the crime analyst reports had identified violent crime trends. Team members interacted with residents, investigated problems, attempted to identify and arrest perpetrators, and prevented further criminal activity. They apprehended wanted individuals and provide other services directly related to the prevention of crime in the community. When shooting activity would take place, team members would respond to and remain in the area many times walking the area on foot. Some of the statistics resulting from this crime suppression team deployment are they had over 4,500 citizen contacts, over 1,300 traffic stops, over 1,100 verbal warnings were issued, 71 drug arrests, 54 drugs seized, 37 warrant arrests, and 32 other PC arrests. Violent re crime was reduced significantly in and around Fort Pierce. Each member served with professionalism, confidence, and their teamwork was exemplary. These are the assets to the, they are the assets to their agencies, their community, and the law enforcement profession. And I will tell you that during the 10 weeks that this unit was out there, the sheriff and the chief of police in Fort Pierce did not receive one complaint from the community about the way that they conducted themselves and did their job, which in and of itself is amazing. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Commendation, Ken Waters. Is he here? He, oh, there he yeah, is. Here there he is. is. 
Ken Waters is the agency's fleet and facilities manager. During this quarter, Mr. Waters has been faced with several major projects that will benefit the Sheriff's Office in years to come. During this quarter, Mr. Waters arranged to have the entire facility lock system rekeyed to ensure that there was high security in all of the areas of the office. This had not been done since this office opened back in the mid-80s. Also during this period, Ken was the project manager on the construct construction project of the vehicle storage area uh, where we keep our evidence vehicles and uh, specialty vehicles for the office. Uh, this storage area has uh, affectionately been renamed Waters World. <laughs> Mr. Waters coordinated permitting and the movement of all the vehicles to a separate secure storage area during the construction process. In addition, he was responsible for the security of the evidence containers in the impound yard. Mr. Waters co coordinated with county staff to have uh, millings brought in to put down a solid base underneath the covered area to ensure that uh, we wouldn't have any water runoff and that the area would be safe for employees to move around uh, and move vehicles, etc. Mr. Waters also arranged for the electrical contractors and the fencing contractors to complete the project. Kim was also able to accomplish this normal project based on his vast background as a general contractor and electrical contractor. While his oversight for construction projects, the office saved considerable dollars and ensured that all the construction and contractors were on time during this project. All in all, these projects were successfully implemented and completed during this quarter. In addition to what is mentioned in the nomination, he has also been working uh, with the county staff as far as getting um, considerable number of building permits squared away for the uh, Gary Morales training facility and uh, some of the upgrades out there. So uh, to put all of that into one basket for, the, for, the, for this particular quarter was quite an accomplishment and for that we thank Ken for his service. Thank you very much. And of note, he's worked so hard he's lost about 20 pounds. He looks fabulous, falling away to nothing. Before I share with you a, a couple of notes uh, from the public, uh, everyone here knows we went through accreditation this week. Uh, the assessors were out and about uh, testing your knowledge on what goes on here. And uh, we finished the, uh, the assessment exit interview yesterday morning right before lunch. Uh, I can tell you since I've been sheriff, we've never had an exit interview that was so glowing as uh, yesterday's. Uh, one of the comments that one of the assessors uh, said, and it was the female, if you uh, interacted with her, uh, Commander Walters was her name, right? Uh, um, she, uh, she works at the Altamont Police Department, and she seemed to really home in on our mission statement and our values. And uh, those of you that had the chance to interact with her, uh, you know that she was looking for some specific uh, answers. However, uh, she said that a lot of our employees didn't know specifically what our mission statement was, but they did know that uh, my mission was it was just important to serve our community as it was to protect our community, and that changing a flat tire for a little old lady was just as important as arresting a bank robber uh, at the scene. So uh, I'm going to share with you two notes that I got just uh, this month uh, concerning changing tires, and if you don't think it makes a difference in someone's uh, psyche about what we do just just listen to these letters I was stranded on the side of the highway with a flat tire uh, around 11 p.m. Uh, Deputy Brennan was on his way home and decided to stop and help us anyway we very much appreciate him and his help he did not have to stop at all thanks to him my opinion of law enforcement has changed a great deal thank you Deputy Brennan you are a fine example of what more officers should be and the force should be very proud to have you on their team. Uh, that was sent from uh, a guy named Michael on St. Lucie Boulevard. And uh, to show you the true impact of what uh, changing a tire does, I'm going to read this next letter. Dear Sheriff Estrada, now right away, <laughs> now right away you know he made an impact, right? Thank you so much for rescuing, rescuing me uh, last night. It was so cold, I had only inside clothes on, and she has that in uh, quotation marks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and I was totally, uh, and I had a blown tire, totally. You went above and beyond the call of duty to set air in the spare and change my bad tire. I needed to get home to my husband who has had two major strokes and was home alone. You will so, you will go far in your career with your very kind and helpful nature and from a senior citizen, you are one good looking dude. <laughs> Thank you for your kindness. With much appreciation, Pauline. Now, Deputy Estrada became Sheriff Estrada over this encounter, and uh, he's on Pauline's list as one good-looking dude. So I just want to tell you, uh, you all make an enormous impact with your dealing with the public, and I appreciate that. And with that, uh, keep doing what you're doing. Um, Thank you all for what you do every day. God bless you all. And we have uh, cookies over there on the other side of the building. Take care.